version of myself while I'm going through corruption. What I don't like about, one thing I don't like about the church is they make it seem like you have to come and immediately get to perfection. First of all, anybody perfect, and even the ones that's been in the church for their whole entire life, still ain't perfect enough for him to call or consider them perfect. So when you start telling people, oh, you coming in here and the sermon is about the smoking and the drink, we get that. We get it. People do things every day when they live in, 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 in the flesh. Can we focus on something that gets us out of that mind state instead of like the constant, like the constant badgering, like you're doing this wrong? I don't need that. I don't. To be honest with you, I don't know that I'm ever going to give up weed and I don't think he's going to like me any less. If I don't, that'll just be the sin that I die with. I can still talk to him. I can still get the things that I need from him without feeling like... Okay. As religion, for me, it 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 is it, it divides. It divides. Like if the focus is the cool, I Tiffany can be T, Tiff, T T, Tiffany. What there's some, a nickname that have nothing to do with her name, and it'll still be the same person we're talking about. When you start telling people, no, it has to be this one, or this is the right one. No, this is the right. It's, it's just too much. His name is whatever you want to call him. I call him God. Sometimes I call him universe. Sometimes I separate them. Sometimes I'm the same person. For me, God is the father. The universe is my mother. And I'm a product of the environment. This is what I tell myself. This is what I live by. And it makes sense for me. It's not for nobody else to do. And it works. And it has worked more than every single church that I've been to. Every single religion that I've tried. Every single discussion that I've had with, with spiritual advisors. And it's like, no. Because we can really... I dream more. I premonise more now. Before it was something that happened sporadically. Once every couple of years. Once every couple of months. Now it's every time you close your eyes. You can see something. And now you're going to start traveling. And see how that feels. I don't like barriers. That's why I don't like working. That's why I don't like rules. I ain't very... I am ignorant. I don't like being told what to do. Bring you two full of chairs right here, baby. When you sit right here for me. Yeah, so for mommy, yeah. Cause see. Oh, you there? Oh, just no, unfold it right there. Yeah, yeah, like that. There you go, man. Push it backwards, right? There you go, watch your hand, baby. There you go, yep. And turn around. So far to come, yep. That's good, keep one on one. And you keep that one, you sit right here. Push it back. Okay, okay. okay. Hey, you got the key. Hey, you got the key. Okay. Where's Juju? She's coming. She wants to take my mother. Oh. Miss Elise. Oh, I don't know. I just realized she's right here. What's that, Mom? Yeah. I'm going to start it. Here we go. I'm gonna be borrowing you today too. Huh? I'm gonna be borrowing you today too. Mm -hmm. okay. And we gonna throw what she just said in there for a second. I wanna see. Nerve, I can get on today. No, give me the best one. Give me the best one. Give me the best one. Cause I don't 
don't get that. Like, black people hate everything else about slavery but Jesus. No. I'm a, I'm a, why she not here? I don't want to sound like I'm being offensive, but that's the fucking truth for me. I just, I don't get it. Everything else is not good for that. Hi, Juju. I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be saying hi to y'all, but Juju just walked in. Hi, Juju. I'll be right back. Hi, Mama. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm done being ghetto. Okay. Um, Hi, thank you guys for coming back to True Lies, the podcast. And this week we're going to talk about the ignorance that was the Derek Chauvin trial. Or the ignorance that essentially just is this fucking justice system that they want to call justice. One thing that I've learned in listening to the last little bits, like what they want to call closing arguments, is that police literally... Um, They say an oath, and in that oath, they literally say things to the effect that you are not supposed to be afraid of your position. Mm. Like, that's kind of like against the rules. And I'm literally trying to find it for y'all because I printed it and I want to read it. Okay, here it is. With no compromise for crime and with relentless prosecution of criminals, I will enforce the law courteously okay courteously um appropriately without fear right like that i'm afraid i i felt threatened i was in fear for my life without fear is what they say right malice or ill will never employing unnecessary force or violence and never accepting gratuities so i'd like to know at which point that became an actual argument that people can viably say out of their fucking mouths as to why they are shooting and killing people on the streets. I'm just curious. Um, if you said that you were signing up for this dangerous job, right? And part of that dangerous job is that you are not supposed to be afraid because part of that job is people might try to fucking kill you. That's what you're signing up for, is potential death, right? Like in the fucking army. That's what you signed up for. How is that a viable argument? That people can really keep saying, I was afraid. Or what's getting better now is I mistaken my gun for a taser. Neither here nor there. But... What was interesting to me is how they, one, first and fucking foremost, the insult and injury of it all was the fact that we had to go to trial for Derek, I mean, for George Floyd to prove that he didn't fucking kill himself. Um, and then the fact of what they were trying to use to justify how he could have possibly killed himself. Um, the defense attorney said something to the effect of he was chewing gum. Um, he described a crackhead Right, because anybody who's from the hood knows what a crackhead looks like. They know how crackheads behave. They're always fucking jittery. They're always doing something weird or something with their fucking skin and face, and it, that's just how they move, right? Um, but when someone who is not from the hood sees that, they're automatically going to assume that person is high. No, that person has a history of getting high. Right now, he's probably trying to get back there, right? Um, and then the fact that he was chewing gum, a crackhead, a child, a man, female, transvestite, um, uh, or I said transvestite, transgender, um, any fucking grace on the planet. I don't think anybody with a good sense would still be chewing fucking gum when you're being asked to put your hand behind your back. I don't give a fuck how high you are or how drunk you are. At that moment, you might want to think about spitting that fucking gum out. He was chewing a banana before he went into the store. So maybe he could have choked on the banana because it didn't digest fully. This is the type of ignorant ass shit you gotta sit and listen to. And then I gotta worry about the 13 year old that I made to be a blessing to somebody else. And sometimes he got a little nasty spice about him because he's a fucking boy, a black man, a human being and entitled to do so. He might have to Explain his death because he was chewing gum or buying Skittles. 
I know a lot of people, and we were just talking about um, folks and their religions, right? I don't really judge. I don't get into people's religions and what their preferences. I do my thing, you do your thing, and if we get there together, that's beautiful. But uh, I'm not one of them people that's going to go to the Bible for you. I'm not going to go pray for you. I'm not going to wish nothing good for you. I don't know how that became something that makes motherfucking sense. I didn't make, first of all, I didn't get the, the experience of the intercourse. It might be beautiful, right? The nine months that follows is really not. And then I got to go through contractions until he's ready to come out. Then I have to go through the pushing until he's ready to pop all the way out, right? Um, then I have to raise that thing for you to tell me that you felt threatened and you couldn't talk to him. Because when I feel threatened, if I should ever feel that, I'm gonna punch him in his face. I have fists. They work too. Why do you need a weapon to do your job? The fuck are you so afraid of? Because niggas in the hood are not afraid of people who are carrying guns because that ain't got nothing to do with me. I understand that you might be put in a situation where you have to communicate with people and then I guess you might want to feel some kind of protection. But if you're fucking scared, you don't need a gun. This is why bitch ass niggas in the streets and pussy ass females on the streets don't walk around with guns and be shooting everything. They're scary. If you were afraid for your life, go be a